Hey, what's going on, guys? FK here, and today we're talking about uh, oh, the entire CEO Wade Rosen's done another interview. So we're gonna have a look at this. We're gonna have a little look at what Ro what Rosen's got to say about you know Atari, what they're doing, and all this sort of stuff. So as we talk, obviously before we get into this, though, I have to obviously disclose I do have a financial stake in Atari. I do have a own shares in Atari, so I am a little bit biased. So let's have a look at this. The icon video, iconic video game company Atari is gradually coming out of a turnaround. CEO Wade Rosen tells Axios. Why it matters, Atari, a brand that goes back 50 years, has had a few shaky decades as various owners in this case have tried to recapture the glory of the pioneering company behind Pong and the Atari 2600. While Atari has faced its difficulties, some of its gaming, some of gaming's oldest heavyweights, including Nintendo, Sega, and Capcom, have remained industry leaders while keeping old games and franchises alive. Yeah, that is true. People don't seem to understand this, but a lot of the companies that were deemed Atari's competitors before Sega and Nintendo, like Coleco, like Intellivision, aren't a thing anymore. Uh, in Coleco's case, or in, or in Intellivision's case, have supposed to be making a comeback. They're supposed to be coming back, but they've still yet to release anything of value. You can argue that they obviously have a few Evercade cartridges, but there's nothing really major coming from Intellivision since Telerico bought them, so... I would, I would call them a Dan out. And obviously, comparing them to Nintendo, Sega, and Capcom, it's quite big, because obviously, for those who don't know, uh, at one point, Konami was in that list as well, and Konami's obviously given up on gaming, it seems, so there's that. State of play, Atari headquartered in New York, but based in Paris, posts a steep 5.4 million euro slash $6 million loss for the six months ending September 2022, the most recent period available. But last month, it announced it had purchased the rights to classic game, Berserk, and Game Studio Night Dive. There's still a lot. Okay, here's what to send. There's still a lot of clean up and turn around it, and it's always relatively painful. Rosen says, and so we were still feeling some of that. But Rosen is very positive about what his now is is now his third year CEO. I view twenty twenty three as an opportunity to do interesting and general moving things, specifically in the innovative retro space. He says, Night Dive, which specializes in remakes and remasters of classic games from the nineteen nineties, is already profitable. Rosen notes. Atari bought the studio for $10 million in cash and stock with the future potential of earnouts. Rosen has previously invested in the company before and served on its board before joining Atari. Berserk and another game, Frenzy, were purchased for an undisclosed sum from pinball entrepreneur Gary Stern to grant Atari more options to remake and reissue the classic game. That and there was 10 other games in that thing that they're not talking about here. Rosen says, being selectively active with merging and acquisitions is part of Atari's future. Okay. What does that mean? Like, does that mean, like, you're going to acquire certain assets and certain companies if you see fit, if you think it fits your brand and value? Because remember, this current version of Atari is actually Infograms, and Infograms whole thing in the 90s and early 2000s was basically buying up a load, and I do mean a load of random companies. Like, they bought Atari, they bought GT Interactive, they bought um, Ocean Software. They bought these assets to, to try and make themselves a huge game publisher. It didn't work out. And then Infograms obviously rebranded to Atari, then they went bankrupt a couple of times, and now they seem to be doing okay, but they're still losing money. They're still losing quite a lot of money. So, yeah, it's interesting to see what happens. Okay. Rosen says, I would view Night Dive as the first of hopefully a larger inorganic push for the company, all really based around that initiative retro ethos. Okay. So, does that mean, like, I don't know, Atari's going to buy Pico Interactive? Atari's going to I don't know, buy the Technos catalog. I mean, there's tons of stuff that Atari could buy if they wanted to. And if they had the money to. And because obviously Night Dive is always going to help Atari offset some of its losses. Because obviously they've got some popular games like System Shark, which obviously sell really well. It could lead to obviously Atari pushing more and obviously growing more. And Atari could be on the verge of a comeback. And I mean like a huge comeback. Not like, oh, yeah, they, they, they made another missile command. I mean, like, they could make an actual comeback here. But it depends. Between the lines, Atari's acquisitions come in, in a, amid a flurry of projects, including a line of rematching versions of classics like Asteroid and Miscommand, as well as Adventure into Blockchain. Now, how about you just scrap Atari X and the Atari Blockchain stuff, please? That's not going to make you money. That's going to lose a lot of money. Rosen's software has shown in the strongest immediate returns, Atari 50 and an acclaimed mix of retro game compilation an interactive documentary was the company's top selling release of last year Atari and Spurs are also working on original games yeah like what like, can, can we get some uh, announcements I know, they, I know they work on that what's it Pixel Ripped 1978 
Which to me then begs the question, is Atari going to acquire the developer of that game and obviously own that franchise? Like, what are they doing? It's it's an awkward look. It's an awkward look to the future, to be honest. Rose is also hopeful about licensing deals and potential inroads in other media and says, as recent success around game movies bode wow, one chance for Atari is a lack of iconic game characters. It has no Mario or Sonic. Rosen says the hit Lego movie show how to overcome that issue. Do do they though? Because didn't Playmobil try to do the same thing and that film lose millions of dollars? Because what you got to realize is the, is when it comes to the brands around certain things like the Lego movie, the reason it was successful was because of all the tie-in characters that were there. You know, Batman was one of the main characters in that in that film for God's sake. But no, 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 no. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. An Atari movie is gonna like. Make billion dollars at the box of this. Also, after the first Lego movie, Lego movie two was just a failure. Let's see, Atari's reissued VECS a hardware offering launch before Rose and joined Atari has struggled. I think the biggest challenge change there is so rec- is to recognise hey, but what are but this is, is unique and special, and the answer is not enough. Totally to fix that. Rose says the company plans to plans to introduce hardware this year that can serve as a VCS add-on or function independently. The company's blockchain plans run by a sister subsidiary called Atari X are shifting to focus on building community and de-emphasize the underlying tech. So the bottom line is there's been a lot of disappointment with Atari for a long time and me saying that things are going to be different isn't going to change that, Rosen says. I just ask that people just continue to watch what we do and just let the actions of the company in the coming years hopefully speak for themselves. Okay, I'm gonna break this down. So from what this from, from what I've gathered from this, this is basically just me gathering stuff. I'm just what I'm saying. Atari seems to be looking at acquisition targets. You know, they've already got this uh, Stern catalog. They got Night Dive. Night Dive is obviously profitable. Night Dive was actually a good investment, but. We're just working along for Atari. I'm not entirely sure. It depends on what Atari tries to buy and what Atari tries to do to grow. I mean, if they decided to actually go to Chris Sawyer and buy the rollercoaster Coaster Icon franchise, I'd be fine with that. I think that'd be a good acquisition, good deal. But, I don't know. There's nothing really Atari can really buy, in my opinion, that's really going to really like set them apart from anyone else. Like, what, they could go after Driver or Glover or some of their other old IPs that they sold off. Battlezone, maybe. But, don't think this company. Don't think the companies own them are going to sell. Likewise, Atari hasn't got the capital to really acquire someone like Rebellion Development, who has some popular franchises which you know could help revitalize Atari. Now, I don't know. I don't know what the future of Atari is. You know, it's just. I don't know. I, I do have an investment in Atari. Obviously, I've recently half my investment sold some off to purchase get buy into another gaming uh, studio, which I'll talk about in another video. But. I don't know. I don't know what Atari's plan here is, and it's kind of confusing to me because Atari's had all this time to try and like bounce back. Rosen's on their third year, and he's done all this stuff in the third year. It sort of feels a little bit feel it feels a little bit disingenuous to me. Like he's trying to suddenly try and make Atari come back, especially when I think it was like a year or two ago he bought Moby Games. Like I don't know why. They bought Moby Games, to be honest, for $1.5 million as well. Like, that seemed like a really weird purchase to me. But, yo, Atari does what Atari does, I guess. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts about this in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think Atari's making a comeback? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.